And uh, I, I want you to I want to share some of the things that I feel that God's laid upon my heart to share with you tonight. And Second uh, Timothy, the fourth chapter, and I, will, I want us to begin reading from verse number six. Thank God. I want us to know the, the writing of Paul as he writes to Timothy. Praise God. Second Timothy, the fourth chapter, and uh, verse number six. Praise God. I encourage you. Uh, to always bring your Bible to church. Uh, don't leave your Bible home just because we got that on the screen. I always encourage everyone to bring your Bibles and let's read it together. Praise God. The Bible says in, in the fourth chapter, verse number six, uh, 2 Timothy, it says, "For listen to the words of Paul. He said, for I'm now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. Notice what he said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all of them also that love his appearing. Hallelujah. Could you stretch forth your hand this way and, and ask God for his holy anointing power. Father, I want to thank you, Lord, to, uh, tonight. We meet us around these altars. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Can everybody say amen? You may be seated tonight. I want you to notice Verse number six tonight, where Paul has said, For I'm now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. You know, when we begin to look at this, and I begin to read this, and when he got down to where he said, I fought a good fight, I have finished my course. And I want to talk just a little bit, preach a little while on the soldier's course, the soldier's course. Notice what he said one more time, for I'm now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. Here we have the dying words of an old soldier, amen. And without reservation, Paul said, I am now ready to be offered. You see, this wording takes us back to the Old Testament practice of pouring out wine upon certain sacrificial offerings. And Paul viewed his martyrdom and the shedding of the blood as an offering poured out to God. Paul had lived for Christ and now he is willing to die for him. Amen. But I want you to notice, Paul said, the time of my departure is at hand. Now, this word departure means unloosing. You see, that word unloosing is a military term that speaks of breaking up an encampment. Amen. This word picture, uh, pictures the loosening of the tent stake to break camp and to move on. Amen. Paul was a pilgrim. We know that old song, you know, I'm a pilgrim and stranger. I'm just passing through. This world wasn't his home, you see. His pilgrimage was about over. Oh, my, he was looking forward to pulling up stake and moving on to heaven. Praise the Lamb of God. I don't know about you, but I'm, I feel like uh, uh, sometimes about like Paul. I'm ready to pull up stake and move on towards heaven. Praise the Lamb of God. We are all pilgrims and strangers, and we're just passing through. Amen. We've got to realize tonight, ladies and gentlemen, this world is not our home. Amen. We don't supposed to get ground rooted down here. Thank God. All my, uh, I'm telling you, adults. Don't get settled too, too hard because I feel in a few more days that, thank God, it could happen tonight. Amen. We could be moving to a new place. 
I said, we could be moving to a new place, amen. But I want you to notice, thank God, the course of this old soldier. Praise God. And uh, notice Paul's conflict was thought. Amen. First of all, I want you to notice, he said, I have fought a good fight. Notice that Paul didn't just fight, but his fight was good. I said his fight was good. He wasn't fighting the brethren on issues that didn't matter, no. You see, our challenge is not merely uh, to fight, but to fight a good fight. To fight a good fight, the word good speaks of that which is worthy, honorable, noble, and commendable. Hallelujah to God. You see, uh, looking at Paul's ministry, Paul's ministry wasn't occupied by promoting personalities and preference. No, he fought for the things of eternal value. I said he fought for things of eternal value. He fought for sound doctrine. He fought to see souls saved. Thank God Christians discipled and churches planted. Thank God, oh my, this was the conflict oh, that he had. Paul's conflict was fought. But now he said, I have fought a good fight. Amen. Thank God, oh my. But listen, not only Paul's conflict, Conflict was uh, was fought, but I noticed something else about this. Paul's course was finished. Paul's course was finished. What do you mean? In that seventh verse, he said, "I have finished my course." Now, this is the language of a runner who, one who is competing for a prize. Oh yes, he he is in it to win it. Here we see a great accomplishment in his life. Paul had finished his course. And you see many starts but do not finish. And we see that Paul stayed by the stuff. It is easier to quit than to finish. Oh, my, my, that is the way there are so many, that's the reason there are so many uh, quitters today. It's easy to start but it's hard to finish. I said, it's easy to start, but it's hard to finish. We see a lot of folks who makes a good start for God. They have a glorious beginning, but after a while, you don't see them anymore. What's happened? I'll tell you what's happened. They don't have staying power. I said, they don't have staying power. You wonder, well, they got saved. They got, it seemed like they got a touch of God and seemed like they're just right there. But all of a sudden, something happens. You don't see them no more. What's happened? That thing, they just don't have staying power. Oh, my, my. Listen here. They are not set on finishing their course. But Jesus said, no man having put his hand to the plow and look back, it's fit for the kingdom of God. That sums up, uh, you know, a lot of people tonight. They start well, but they are always looking back. I've heard this old saying, you probably heard it too. If you keep looking back, you'll eventually fall back. Amen. And Paul finished his course because his heart was set on finishing his course. Oh, hallelujah to God. I don't know about you, but when I started, I had a made of mind, I'm going through. I'm going to the finish line. Earlier, he said, I want you to notice in the book of Acts, verse 20 and verse 24, he said, but none of these things move me, neither counted my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord to testify, uh, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Amen. You see in the book of Acts, Paul looked forward to a faithfully, uh, you know, finishing his course. Here in 2 Timothy, he was able to say, I have finished my course. I have finished my course. What a soldier. 
I said, what a soldier that Paul was. Thank God, not only have Paul's conflict was fought, amen, but oh, but listen here, not only his, his course was finished, but I look at the third thing that I want you to notice here tonight, Paul's conviction was final. I said, Paul's conviction was final. He said, I have kept the faith. Woo! I have kept the faith, praise God. You see, Paul's concern was not his greatness, no, his right, his accomplishment, his earning, or even his life. No, my friend, when it came down to the end, just before Paul was beheaded for preaching Christ, he, his main concern was the faith. I said, the faith. Paul said to Timothy, that young preacher who was following his footsteps, he said, I have kept the faith. Oh, hallelujah. I have kept the faith. You see, the faith spoke of here is the entire revelation from God. The whole body of the truth as contained in his word. Oh, yes, in Jude, the third chapter, thank God, notice the writings. We are commanded to earnestly contend for the faith. You see that word contend, contend means to strive against, to struggle in opposition. Woo, hallelujah. If we're going to make it to the end, we've got to strive. We've got to put forth every ounce of energy that we can to make it to the finish line. It's easy to start the race, but it's hard to finish. Amen. Why is it so hard to finish, Brother Coley? I'll tell you why. Because of oppositions that we come against and things that we are encountered with every day. But thank God. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, here was a man that, oh, no matter what he had to struggle with, no matter what his opposition was, he was just ready. Thank God he had a made-up mind. I like what it says, earnestly contend for the faith. You see, it comes from a military term that speaks of a strenuous, in, uh, intense, determined struggle to conquer uh, the enemy. Oh, yes, there's an old song that says, I'm determined to hold out to the end. Woo, hallelujah. You see, there are many enemies who would destroy the faith if they could. But you know what? Paul stood against them. Woo, I said, Paul stood against them. He earnestly contended for the faith. As Paul's earthly life came to a close, he could say, I have kept the faith. And when Paul stood before Felix, he kept the faith. When he stood before Agrippa, thank God he, he kept the faith. When Paul faced the officials uh, uh, at Rome, I'll tell you what he did, he kept the faith. Even when Paul was confronted by Peter, he kept the faith. When it came down to the fundamental doctrine of the word of God, notice this, Paul never gave in one inch. He never gave in one inch. You know what I'm saying? What a soldier. That's the kind of soldier that we need today that will not budge but stand for what they believe. Stand for what they believe. Don't give in not one inch. I want to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Oh, my, what a soldier Paul was. And I want my, my, when it said, when I go down, when they, I lay this old body down and I go before him, I want, his, I want him to say, well done. You was a great soldier. Hey, Amen. You never gave in. You stayed true to me. Hallelujah. What a soldier. Praise God for Paul and, and others like him, faithful servants who stood without compromising of the truth. Amen. He, 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 he was not a man that was going to compromise in any fashion or any form. Thank God Paul stood for the truth. Not only Paul's conflict was fought, Paul's 
course is finished. And Paul's course was final. But can I tell you, Paul's crown was forever. I said Paul's crown was forever. Notice what he said in verse number 8 of chapter 4. He said, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not me only, but unto all of them that also love his appearing. Woo, what a day that's going to be. I said, what a day that's going to be. Hallelujah to God. The songwriter writes it like this. Once, one life will soon be passed. Only what is done for Christ will last. Come on now, there's a great reward that awaits those who finishes well. Amen, it's no time to get discouraged. There's no time to throw in the towel, but let's keep our head high and keep our eyes upon the goal, and if we make it to the finish line, there's gonna be a prize. Oh, hallelujah, I said there's gonna be a prize. I want you to notice Paul spoke of his crown. You see, the word of God names five crowns which are to be awarded to believers who overcome. Five crowns that's going to be awarded to believers who overcome. And these wards are given for the faithful service in five different areas. Amen. You say, well, what are they, Brother Cauley? Oh, yes, you might want to write this down and, and get your scripture and write it down too. Amen. First of all, there's going to be an incorruptible crown. Amen, an incorruptible crown. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 9 and 25, I want you to notice what it says, and every man that striveth for mastery is tempered in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but, but we an incorruptible crown crown. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Thank God. This reward is given for mastery one body and keeping it under subjection. This is the victor a crown and will be awarded to those who have been faithful and have endured sacrifice and self-denial. Woo, hallelujah. I said, my, when I begin to look at this and study this, and begin to write these scriptures down, I said, oh, God, help me, Lord. I don't want a corruptible crown, but I want an incorruptible crown. I want to be faithful unto you. Praise the Lamb of God. Thank God. Oh, I don't know about you, but I want to receive that incorruptible crown. Second of all, that second crown, is that's a crown of rejoicing. The crown of rejoicing. In 1 Thessalonians 2 and 19, I want you to notice what it says. For what is our hope, our joy, our crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? Hallelujah. This reward for winning souls to Christ is given to the believers for their faithfulness in reaching others with the gospel. Oh, hallelujah, I want to do everything that I can to win somebody to God because I want him to give me that crown of rejoicing. You was faithful unto me, and you went out and told the good news about me and my saving grace and my saving power. Hallelujah to God. I don't know about you, but thank God I, I'm longing today. Thank God I don't know what awaits for all of us. No, but I want to be faithful until the end. Oh, my, the crown of rejoicing. And that third crown was the crown of of righteousness. Amen. The crown of righteousness. Notice what he said in that fourth chapter again. 
and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things and endure affliction. Do the work of evangelists. Make full proof of thy ministry. For I'm now ready to be offered at the time of my departure. It's at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not me only, but unto all of them also that love his appearing. Woo, hallelujah to God. Listen here, folks. This is for those who love and long for his second coming. Woo, hallelujah to God. When I began to read this and study this, I wanted to get up and holler glory to God. Hallelujah. Paul, you made it, and I can make it also. Hallelujah. Not only the, the incorruptible crown, the crown of rejoicing, the crown of righteousness. But notice, amen, that fourth crown, the crown of glory. There will be a crown of glory to get, be given. Amen. Because when I look at 1 Peter 5 and 4, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away that fadeth not away. You see, this is the reward God gives to those who love and feeds his people. Woo, hallelujah to God. Thank God, that's shouting ground right there. And then that fifth one is the crown of life. Praise God. What do you mean? When I began to look in the book of Revelation, the second chapter, verse number 10, he said, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into a prison that you may be tried and ye shall have tribulation. Ten days be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life hallelujah and then James said in James 1 and 12 he said blessed is a man that endureth temptation for when he is tried he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to them that love him hallelujah Woo! hallelujah hallelujah I just want to know, ask somebody here tonight, have you been striving hard lately? Amen. Have you been putting ever kind, much all the energy that you have to thank God to achieve the goal? Come on now. Hallelujah to God. Listen, these crowns will be given to the Christian right after the Lord comes to take his church home to glory. Hallelujah. And we are exhorted, exhorted by Paul in 1 Corinthians 9 and 24. He said, so run that you may obtain Woo, hallelujah run that you may obtain these crowns hallelujah my God my God you see as a Christian we run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Oh, hallelujah, what a wonderful day it will be when Jesus rewards his children for their faithfulness. Thank God, folks. I don't know about you, but oh my. Thank God, everything that you have done for Christ here and you've done it from your heart, you're going to be rewarded when you get on the other side. Sometimes we think what we have done for God, has it come unnoticed? No, 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 no. Amen. My God, God's kept a record of everything that you've ever done. He's kept a record of everybody you come up to and witness to about him. Thank God he's, oh my, he's paid attention of every hospital visit that you win, every home visit that you win, every phone call that you uh, made to try to encourage somebody. He's kept a record of it. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, you're going to be rewarded for your faithfulness. 
unto God. But however, these crowns are not for our glory. Oh my, I don't want to bust your bubble here tonight, but these crowns are not for our glory, but for his. You see, the Bible said in the book of Revelation 4 and 10, the four and 20 elders falls down before him that sit on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne. And i tell you one thing tonight. Oh, I don't care what I receive. Thank God I'm not worthy of it. I'm going to cast it at his feet. Amen. I'm going to lay everything at his feet because, uh, thank God, oh, my, I just not, I didn't do anything for Tim Coley, but I did it for him. He, my, he earns everything that I've ever done for him. I did it all for him. You see, as we're faithfully run the race, we earn crowns to his honor and glory. Paul had put it in his time. He had stayed faithful. He had hung in until the end. When I look in that faith chapter in the book of Hebrews, I see those that endured an incorruptible crown. There was Abel where the Bible said he offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Then there was Enoch who was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him far be before his translation. He had this testimony that he pleased God. And then there was Noah. No, but being warned of God of things that not seen yet, but moved with fear and prepared an ark. Woo, hallelujah. And then there was little Abraham by faith. Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance, obeyed and went out not knowing whether he went. I'm talking about men that died Thank God, men that's going to receive an incorruptible crown. Hallelujah. I'm talking about men who look for a city which had foundations, who build her and make her is God. Oh, hallelujah. Then there was Sarah. Thank God, through faith, also Sarah herself received strength, conceived seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Hallelujah. And you see, the Bible said, these all died in the faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. I'm talking about a soldier's course. Woo! A soldier's course. My, 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 my. Listen here. Here he is in prison, talking about Paul, awaiting execution. It's just about over. And Paul could say without reservation that he had accomplished what God had called him to do. Hallelujah. I've seen a little story, and uh, I want to just relate it to you. As I was reading it, I thought, my, my. When I go to the grocery store, I see this product, I think I'll just buy it. Praise God. In 1904, William Borden graduated from Chicago High School. He was the heir of the Borden Dairy and was already a millionaire. As a graduation present, his parents bought him a trip around the world. I want you to get this. As Barton tri traveled through Asia, the Middle East, and Europe, he developed a great burden for people. He wrote his parents and informed them that he was going to give his life as a missionary. After making this decision, I want you to get the story, William Borden wrote two words in the back of his Bible. And these two words were, 
no reserve. No reserve. Borden went to Yale, and upon graduating, he turned down some high-paying jobs offered. He wrote two more words in his Bible. And the other two words was no retreat. From there, he went on to graduate work at Preston Seminary. When he finished his study at Preston, Borden sailed for China to work with Muslim. He stopped first in Egypt to study Arabic. While in Egypt, he came down with spinal meningitis. Within a month, 25-year-old William Borden was dead. But notice, Borden had given not only his wealth, but himself. When his parents received their song, son's uh, belongings, they were tremendously encouraged by the personal note he had pinned in his back of his Bible. Just before his death, Borden had written two more words in the, his Bible and underneath the words, I want you to listen to this, no reserved, that was his first two words. The second two words, no retreat. And the last two words was no regret. Woo. When I thought, when I go to the, to, to the grocery store to buy milk, and I see the label sign boarding on there. I think I'm going to buy it. Thank God, because here was a young man that was willing to give all of his money away. Thank God to become a, me, a, a missionary for God. Hallelujah to God. Oh, my. I say, Lord, give us more men like William Borden. Amen. I'm telling you, uh, oh, God, give us more men like that. Thank God that will sacrifice. Praise the Lamb of God. Oh, my. They will, at the end of their race, they'll say, no retreat. Or no reserve, no retreat, or no regret. I'm telling you what, I don't find no regret, brother Moore. Since I started in this old race, hallelujah, I may have had my problems, uh, I may have had my ups and downs, uh, and my discouragement, but I'm going to tell you, I have no regret, hallelujah, because God has been good. I said, God has been good to me. Woo, hallelujah to God. Thank God. When I seen, read others in the Bible, oh, when they died, they didn't receive the incorruptible crown, no. Oh, my, I don't tell you what they did. They, they received a corruptible crown. They sold out. Look at Judas. Oh, my, Judas sold out. And my, what did he receive? He received a corruptible crown. Oh, God help us. I'm telling you, look at, look at King Saul sold out. Oh, yes, he's telling him becoming, being a sacrifice and being obedient to God and doing what God said. Saul sold out. Amen. He sold out to sell. And on and on through the Bible, men, oh yes, that, oh yes, turned away from God. Oh, look at Demas, Demas. Oh, I don't know if you'd never find where he ever came back to God or not. But oh, when Paul was writing to Timothy in this letter, he said, my departure is at hand. He said, I want you to come quickly. I want you to come. Demas has forsaken me for the love of this present world. Hey, man, look, God, I'm telling you what, that old corruptible crown, it's not worth it. But that uncorruptible crown, hallelujah, it's going to be worth it. It. I said it's going to be worth it. Hallelujah. I find no regret. There's no time to retreat. No, no. It's time to go forward, praise God. If you put your hands to the plow, don't look back. Keep going forward for God Almighty. We're ending. We're coming to the end of the shore. Amen. 
Our race is about over. Every dial, every gauge, it's pointing to the coming of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Can we say along with Paul, if it would come to the end of our race tonight, could we say I have fought a good fight? Huh? I have finished my course. I ran it with patience. I ran it with all of my might. There's no regret. Oh, God. Hallelujah. I, I, I've talked to people that when they use the word regret, they use it in this fashion, I wish to God that I'd have never turned my back on God. I wish to God I'd never walked away from God. They live in a life of regret. But let me tell you something. But when it comes to serving God, I find no regret. I, folks, he's been good to Tim Cawley. Brother Keith, he's been good to us. Hallelujah to God. Though we've had our problems, and though we've had our mishaps, and we've had our disappointments, but oh, but my, I find it no regret. Thank God I want to just keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I don't know about you, but I just want to get, I just want more of him. Hallelujah. I said, I just want more of him. Hallelujah. You can have the world if you want, but just give me more of him. When I got more of Jesus, thank God I've got everything. I said, I got everything. Hallelujah. I want you to stay with me tonight oh yes and let's raise our hands and say Lord give me more of you amen oh God help me thank God to be like this young man William Barton amen help me to be like him God thank God oh my sell out go all the way and at the end that we could say it's been no regret hallelujah to God I love you, Jesus. How many would just, with your hands raised to God, to step right from where you at and walk down to this altar and with your hands to God and say, Lord.